our gracious and loving heavenly father we come before your holy presence in the name of our lord jesus christ this afternoon open our hearts open our ears that we may hear what the spirit of the lord is speaking to the churches and is speaking to this nation in these last days give us an understanding heart and give us a listening ear that we may hear what the lord is speaking to us and the direction which he is showing to us in the name of the lord jesus christ we pray amen please be seated since the whole of yesterday i do not know what was preached this morning but yesterday you heard about myself and the other two speakers bringing words of judgments and you will know that uh when i minister in the morning the other two speakers were not there but when they brought the messages it all lined up like part 1 part 2 part 3 like confirming one another am i right everybody yes. it was like confirming and reconfirming what was spoken in the first message and the one word that you keep on hearing continuously was of the judgment and uh, yes last night as i was um, after we went back to our hotel rooms and as i was uh, waiting i had a visitation from an angel of god who told me to wait at god at 10 am the following morning so and uh, god would want to speak so this morning at 10 am i waited before god at the appointed time and as i waited i was caught up to heaven to participate at a council of prophets in heaven you know in heaven there are many many councils and among the one council there is a council of the prophets and this prophets council chiefly is concerned or it oversees the last days events that are going to take place on this earth there are many many gatherings in heaven you know the the one thing that we are all most familiar with is a worship service in heaven most of us are only familiar with that because that's what we chiefly read in the book of revelation that everybody gather and they are worshiping god so somehow we all have a wrong notion that in heaven everybody worships 24/7 which is not true because there is worship that goes on in heaven continuously and that is done by the angels certain classes of angels are created for that purpose and they are in one secluded one part of heaven you know the bible says in my father's house are many mansions with a plural right and the the greek word for mansions is actually not mansions the word mansions is not correct it should be greek word is mone m o n e and mone means realms realms of existence so it's not a mansion like we would think a huge castle like buckingham palace no that's not the right translation it is planes or places of existence like for example you have newcastle i mean castle hill you have campbell town you have uh, chatswood you have this you have liverpool blackpool you have blackpool no black oh sorry you know liverpool is a city in england and there's also another city in england called blackpool so if you have liverpool i thought that you must have blackpool no blackpool all right 
so like that you know suburbs where people live likewise in heaven there are these realms of existence or living or to make you feel a little comfortable like let's call it suburbs there are different different suburbs and in one such realm is where a class of angels specially created to worship God and fill the whole of heaven with praise and their job or their created purpose is to continuously lift up praise all throughout for lack of a better word let's use the word day because in heaven there is no day no night so it's one complete eternity so their job or job again is not the right word created purpose is to worship and praise God all continually now that is one place but there is a time in heaven where all beings created beings in heaven together with all the redeemed saints they all gather together to worship God like for example on a your Sunday church service six days of a week you go to work then on a Sunday you gather everybody gather to worship God this you read in Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2 where the Bible says there was a day when the sons of God all gathered before God so that is called a general worship and in Revelation you read about that continually in chapter 7 where all the angels and all the redeemed saints together with the 24 elders they all worshipped God so there is a special time where a worship general worship service takes place in heaven but besides all this there are so many other activities that take place in heaven if you read the book of Revelation very carefully you will find a lot of activities that keeps on going in one place of heaven if you read chapter 8 you'll find the angels bringing bowls of prayer before God so if they are worshiping God all 24 7 so where do they have time to bring bowls of prayer and then in chapter 5 you'll read the 24 elders receive the bowls of prayer and they offered before God so if the 24 elders are also engaged in worshiping all 24 hours so where do they find the time to receive these bowls of prayer to offer unto God and then you'll read in Revelation chapter 12 that the angels Michael and his angels are engaged in war if Michael and his angels are also involved in worship all 24 hours where are they going to find time to go and fight war so there are so many activities take place all the time and then in chapter 15 you read that there were seven special angels appointed to pour the wrath of God upon the whole earth and then in chapter 8 and chapter 9 you read seven angels blowing trumpets upon the world so if all the angels and all the beings are involved in just worshiping God all the time then where do all these angels find other times to do all these other works so let's establish once and for all this correct understanding that heaven is a place where there is a myriad of activities different different activities that take place all the time among all the activities there is one activity at a certain appointed time where all the beings you know even some beings from other planets other worlds created by God they all come congregate to worship God besides that we have all these other things now there's a council in heaven you read of this in the Bible Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 18 it says for who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and to hear his word? Or who has paid attention to his word and listened? So there you have one scripture. So before I share with you what I was shown, I want to just give you some scriptural proofs. 
for such uh, encounters and experience so that our faith is not built on some subjectivity but solidly objectively on the word of god and in isaiah chapter 42 verse 9 behold the former things have come to pass and new things i now declare before they spring forth i tell you of them to whom is god saying he's not saying to everybody that scripture is followed or linked together with amos chapter 3 verse 7 for the lord god does nothing without revealing his secret to his servants the prophets the prophets here do not necessarily mean the prophets on this earth but the prophet saints who are also in heaven if you read revelation chapter 1 you'll read that when god the lord jesus spoke to the prophet john or the apostle john the bible says he sent his angel to communicate to john the things that are to come but then you will read in chapter 19 and chapter 22 that this angel is really not an angel especially if you read revelation chapter 22 verse 8 and 9 he's not really an angel because when john fell down at the feet of the angel to worship him the angel will say to him don't do that you should only worship god i am your fellow brother and of the prophets no no angel will come up to you and say i am your brother or i am your sister angels cannot say that because they are created by god as ministering spirits they don't have the spirit or they are not created in the image of god so the angels will never come up to you say hello brother if any angel if if you ever had an encounter with an angel comes and say hello bro <laughs> number one it means one of two things number one he's not an angel he may be a saint of god number two he's not an angel at all somebody real who come up to say hello brother <laughs> so please remember this so when this angel told john i am your brother and your fellow prophet so that confirms the identity of who this angel is he's none other than a prophet of an bygone era so the prophets are in heaven and god reveals his secrets first to this council he gathers all these prophets together unto him and he tells them this is what i intend to do what do you all think about it he first reveals his secrets to them and uh, then after getting a consensus their opinions and all that and of course god doesn't need to ask for the opinion you know you have an example there in genesis chapter 18 the lord had already decided to destroy sodom and gomorrah but he said let me discuss this over with abraham this is what i'm going to do what do you think about it and then that gave an opportunity you know when god comes and shows us something it is not for us to triumph over or gloat over what god has said most of the time we should do exactly like what abraham did to intercede that is the purpose god is giving us revelation one is to communicate and the other is to intercede and the other scriptural example i want to show you is first kings chapter 22 verses 19 to 23 and micaiah said therefore hear the word of the lord i saw the lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing beside him on his right hand and on his left and the lord said who will entice ahab that he may go up and fall at ramoth gilead see 
Look at verse 19. The all the hosts of heaven standing beside him on the right hand, on the left hand, and the Lord asks them a question. Who will do this or who will do that? You read of a similar thing in Isaiah chapter 6 where the Lord asks, Who shall go on my behalf? See, if, now you, you just imagine in your mind like this. If Isaiah was the only one standing there and he saw the vision, why must God ask who will go on my behalf? Right? The question would have been, will you go on my behalf? Am I right everybody? Yes. Grammatically, that's how it should be. But for God to say, who will go on my behalf? It simply means, Isaiah was not the only one standing there. In a crowd like this, Isaiah was just one among them. And then the Lord looked around and said, Who will go on my behalf? And maybe several hands went up or several hands didn't go. Only Isaiah's hand went up. So this is another scene, scene where the Lord discusses his plans with the before the council, before doing anything on the earth so this being your scriptural background now let me share with you what happened this morning so this morning at 10 o'clock i was brought before this council where there are about seven or eight prophets ancient prophets and the chairman of this council is none other than abraham himself and there's there is uh, Moses in the council, Jeremiah, Elijah, the Apostle Paul, and those ancient ones. And uh, I have been in this council many, many times. It, it has been my merciful grace privilege granted by God to be at the council. So this morning when I was there, the discussion was about Australia. That was the discussion. And that was the purpose I was called. To witness what is, what is being discussed and then to come and share with you. This is one of the call that God gave me several years ago. He said, as a prophet, not only you will hear, but you will participate in the council in heaven and hear what is being spoken and then communicate to the people. I first saw this before I was officially given this call. You know, we have our dear Pastor Elizabeth in our midst. Uh, do you all know Pastor Elizabeth? Yes. Let's give a good clap to Pastor Elizabeth. <laughs> she is one of the pioneer ministers in this city who has labored very much for the Lord and God has given her wonderful anointing for deliverances. And uh, she has pioneered Indonesian church and does even in her very young age today. She goes about doing a great work for the Lord. Selamat datang. And she is a precious woman of God. I remember... I think the first or the second time when I came to Australia, she, she and her church was part of the committee. And uh, I, I cannot remember it was whether it was the beginning of the convention or the post of the con conference when the committee was all praying together and uh, they were all praying for one another. As I was closing my eyes in prayer, I saw heavens open. And that was the first time I saw the council. But at that time, I was not in the council. I was just a spectator. And when I saw the council, they were hearing the prayer that was being prayed on this earth. And then one of the saints there, he said, look at Elizabeth's face. And uh, everybody was closing their eyes and they were praying, you know. And uh, when I opened my eyes, I saw her. There was light, a glow shining on her face and then the word of the lord came for her concerning 
At that time she was going to, do you remember this? Do you remember? Yes. She was going to build a church, construct a church, and she was going through real hell warfare. And that word from the Lord really boosted her that day to keep on going on the project. So that was the first time that I saw in, in the council. But now, sitting there, participating in the council, on a, everyone sits around the table, like a round table, conference table. And there was a huge map of Australia on the table. And the Saint Abraham took something like a pen or I don't know what it was. He drew a line straight from the northernmost part of the land down to the southernmost part. And then he drew another line across. So like the country was divided into four parts. You know, right at the intersection where two lines meet, two angels were stationed there. They appeared. And then, the angels who were there in the country, they were now presenting their report before the council. If you read Genesis chapter 18, Two angels accompanied God to pronounce judgment upon Sodom and Gomorrah. And God came and told Abraham, I will now go and see according to the things that my ears have heard concerning what is coming out of Sodom and Gomorrah. And then the two angels were sent forth to go and see and report to God whether the cup is become full according to all the voices they are hearing coming from the land and whether they sh a judgment should be pronounced. So two angels went forth. And yesterday you heard Brother Neville sharing that the same angels that went to Sodom and Gomorrah, they were sent to Sydney to spy the land. So now this is the report those two angels submitted before the council. Sydney, much sinful activity has been recorded. So they write down in their, on their iPads. Hey, do you think only you have iPad? <laughs> they have a better iPad. That Apple will never keep on changing. Version 2, version 3, version 4. No iPhone 7, 8, 9, 10. No. Only one standard that lasts for eternity. Amen? Okay. Now this is what they reported. I'm going to read to you exactly as how I heard in the council. Things they do in the night are so awful to be mentioned. Dogs are brought into gay clubs by women and sexual acts are committed. Men too commit these acts. So much sexual perversion takes place in this city that makes Sodom and Gomorrah pale in comparison. The two angels who visited Sodom and Gomorrah testified in the council when we visited Sodom and Gomorrah, only men were engaged in gross sexual acts. You read that in Genesis chapter 19, verses 4 and 5. But here, in this city, it is women with women, mankind with animals, parents with children, and some grandparents with their grandchildren. These parents engage in sexual perversion with their children as if they were husbands and wives. Is it true? To the best of your knowledge? We saw babies strangled and killed. Some in the name of medical science 
and some with violent brutality. They were even fed to the animals. Such things also take place in India. Some hospitals who perform illegal abortions, they don't report them. They just throw those uh, fetuses. Some of the fetuses are not, they are really formed. They are thrown out on the dumpster where dogs all gather and the dogs eat those fleshes. And how do we know all this? Because there was an incident where it was reported to the, some public saw that, that the animals, were, the dogs were eating some kind of a tissue and it looked like a small little baby. And the public reported to the police and they came, they found that whole area filled with baby bones. And then when they raided the hospital, they found that illegal abortions were done in the hospital. So, when this was reported, suddenly, one saint stood up. 